Thank you so much, Amanda, for leading us in worship this day. Friends, I have good news to tell you. Each day I wake up, and on the forefront of my mind, in my heart, I face the day with hope. <laughs> but not only that, I live to see Jesus face to face. My grandparents, my grandpa and my grandma, they had died a few years back. And I also live to see them face to face once again, fully redeemed as the people that God always desired for them to be. My grandparents were my friends. My earliest memories are with them. And I was at their house every day of my life until I had gone on to college. There are pictures of my grandmother bathing me in her kitchen sink in the front window for all the world to see. <laughs> my grandpa would throw baseball with me pretty much every summer day that my dad worked. And my dad always worked. So my grandpa was there to throw a ball. I live to see my grandparents face to face, fully redeemed as the people God had always desired for them to be. On this All Saints Day, I hope you too are reflecting about those people that you hope to see once again fully redeemed, their potential realized as God had always desired for that child of God. Now, when death occurs, it's never easy. It wasn't easy for me a few years back. Death is never easy, nor will it ever be, because death is not what we were created for. We were created to be in eternal friendship with God. But when it does happen, God's Word teaches that we are to be there for each other. God's Word teaches that presence is important. In the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 3 through 17, listen now, for the Holy Spirit's calling God's Word to you and to us. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died. And she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives, the name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived in Moab about ten years, both Mahlon and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each in the house of your husband. And she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi replied, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they are grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you because of the hand the Lord has turned against me. And they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. 
And so she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well. If even death parts me from you. The reading of God's word. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we ask that the words of my heart, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you. May your Holy Spirit inspire us to be present for those who mourn. As we remember the important people in our lives, our loved ones, who have died and gone before us. Our hope in Jesus' resurrection is that they, this very moment, are in your warm and loving arms, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is in your name we pray, amen. Both of my grandparents, my grandpa and grandma, just died a few years back. It was while I was a pastor here at Ellensburg. And the one really surprising event that happened, especially the day of their both of their funerals, were my two best friends were there. They didn't know they were coming. They had both taken off work. They talked amongst themselves, and they were there from the morning all the way well into the night. When my best friend's dad died just this spring, <coughs> we were all there. Now you may not think that you have the words for the moment. And part of the reason that sometimes you might avoid those who have experienced death, it's because you fear that you do not have the words for the moment. Presence matters. You do not need words. Presence matters. Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, Christ's Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not always pray as we ought. But Christ's Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches our heart, also knows our minds and intercedes for the saints according to God's will. The Bible's best advice for those who suffer, especially at the time of death, is to remember Jesus Christ. As Hebrews taught us this morning. But before Jesus, Naomi suffers tragic loss. Her husband dies. She is an immigrant in a foreign land, a resident alien. Her two sons die ten years later. And Ruth is in a place, or Naomi rather, is in a place of mourning. But Ruth is there. Although Naomi chooses to stay in this place of mourning, Ruth chooses a different path. Ruth does not allow personal tragedy to define who she is. And Ruth, boldly and courageously, as Pastor Marnie so eloquently taught us last week, she chooses to be bold and to be courageous. And Ruth courageously and compassionately carries Naomi into the future. Not to forget the past. Not to try to get those emotions behind them. 
Because remember, Ruth, she too has lost a beloved husband. But Ruth chooses to courageously and compassionately carry Naomi into the future, not to forget her husband and father-in-law, but in order to remember them and to carry their names well into the future. Friends, I hope you take this time today, this opportunity that is laid before us, to remember your loved ones, the saints who have died and gone before us, to remember what they had taught us, to carry on their virtue, well into the future. For it is my hope that my grandparents, they weren't perfect, to say the least. But Jesus' resurrection gives me hope that they are fully redeemed in the image of Christ. The way God always desired for them to be. I hope this day we also take time to reflect on all the veterans who had died and given their lives in order for us to maintain our freedom. I would say that I miss my grandparents, but Jesus' resurrection always has me looking toward the future hopeful. Even when bad things happen to me, Jesus' resurrection always has me looking towards Jesus Christ where all of history is going to. And I hope you have this hope in your hearts as well, that the loved ones that you are reflecting upon today, you have the sure and certain hope that they are in the warm and loving arms of Jesus Christ this very moment. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in Jesus Christ. With perseverance, let us run the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the perfecter and pioneer of the faith. I preach in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.